Good evening, everyone, and a special good evening to all our online visitors and friends, our congregation, young people, and our shut-ins. Welcome to Family Week. This is night number five. It is such a blessing to spend these moments these nights where we recall the families of the Bible. They are real people just like families today. They encounter the same problems we are encountering today, and they find the same solutions that we find today and you and I can find. We are so glad that as God leads his people, there are solutions for our problems. Just want to welcome you tonight. I am Sean Dowding, the pastor of the church and of this online congregation. And with me is my wife, Jasmine. It is such a privilege to be with all of you tonight. I think my wife wanted to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good evening, everyone. It's really good to have you join us tonight. All right. So we are happy to have you. And I invite Jasmine to let's pray as we begin. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our kind and loving Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and so thank you, thankful that you have brought us to this point in the week, that you have brought us to be here at this time. We know that your spirit is with us and we ask Lord that you would allow us to open up our hearts so that we may be touched by you, so that we may be changed, that we may make a, a difference in the lives of our families so that love may abide, so that all of the challenges and the difficulties that we are experiencing, that they may be put aside because the glory and the light of your love, of your power and your will is at work in our lives. So Lord, we ask a blessing upon all of our families, all of our guests, our visitors who have joined us this evening. We ask, oh God, that we will be changed, that we will be blessed, that we will be moved um, as a result of everything that we hear and experience tonight. So may the power of your spirit rest upon us through throughout the rest of this program. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So we are at the halfway point of our family life week. And I have to say, when I was asked to join my husband to host the first part of the evening, I, my response last week was, well, you know, it's a very busy time in our family home and I'll try and make one or two sessions. Well, I have been here every single night because it has been so fantastic, such a blessing. And if you've missed any of the programs, I would encourage you to go back, go on to um, YouTube and watch the evening programs again. So just a very quick review. On Saturday, my husband talked about when a man loves a woman. Now you can imagine in church, I was smiling away. <laughs> he talked about Adam and Eve and the problem of, problem of blame. And then on Sunday night, Robert Webb um, presented a topic called the green monster. And he talked about jealousy, jealousy as a cancer that eats away at our families. And then on Monday night, Pastor Ivor Richardson he, his title was A Tangled Web, and he talked about the mess that we can sometimes get ourselves into when we try to do things our own way. And then last night, Elder Al, um, Adrian Alvaranga, his title was Between a Rock and a Hard Place. And I will tell you, that sermon blew my mind. So much so that I had to post on my social media. And he talked about Sarah and Abraham, when Sarah put Abraham in a really difficult position. Abraham was between a rock and a hard place. I'm not gonna tell you any more about it. You're gonna to have to go and watch it if you missed it. But what was incredible for me was when um, Elder Alvaranga, he said that when you are caught between a rock and a hard place, choose the rock choose the rock and the rock 
is Jesus, Amen. the rock of our salvation. Amen. And so we have had such an awesome, wonderful, fantastic time. And my husband is going to tell you about what's going to happen tonight. But please invite anyone who has missed it. Make sure your relatives, your family, your neighbors, your friends know about this series of programs and invite them to come and watch it. God bless you as you continue to share with us this evening. Thank you so much, Jasmine. I can hear the enthusiasm <laughs> and the great pleasure of following these programs. And I pray that you'll be catching the same spirit too. Tonight, we have with us Elder Donald Webb. And Elder Donald Webb has a very special title for you. It is called, My Love, There Is No Charge. <laughs> What's the cost of my love? There is no charge. No charge. Now, friends, I don't know if you feel that your love is free. <laughs> but the title tonight is, What's the cost of my love? No charge. And Donald Webb is going to take us through that tonight as we continue to talk about family. And he's going to open it up to us. And I pray that you will have a very attentive heart. But just before he comes, we will have once again the inspiring voice, the melodious voice of our singing evangelist, Mark Prentice. God bless you, Mark. Thank oh, you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I, tonight, I'm just going to sing total praise because God is worthy of all of our all of our praise, he's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Lord, he's worthy. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
coming, oh yes, it's coming from you. Thank you, Lord. everyone happy to be with you tonight i haven't been on zoom for a while so i'm just learning again thank you pastor and mrs dowden for your uh encouragements and for your work each night i have been blessed each night from these meetings i don't know if i'm able to fit in the shoe of those who have gone on before me i have enjoyed every single night god has been good and we can see the results in our families and we are grateful to that i thank you mark for your lovely music and ministry each night it's so nice to see you every night we come on we just love those music thank you so much for your beautiful voice. May God bless you and your family. I want to thank also the family ministry and the leaders of the, those who are responsible for putting this program together, Sister Pierre Louis and her husband. We are grateful that God is using you to um, bless the families. And tonight I, I'm asked to speak about, to continue, sorry, in the with the story of, uh, of starting with Abraham. And I am going to continue where Elder Alvaranga left off last night. And yes, Mr. Sister Dowden, the guy let out some fire last night. <laughs> ah, Alvaranga, Alvaranga, God bless you, sir. So tonight I'll be talking to you about Rebecca, her sons, Jacob and Esau. And of course, you know, Isaac will be part of that story. The story is taken from Genesis chapter 25, you know, all the way down to chapter 27. It takes up a good portion of Genesis. But as we reflect on the story of Isaac and Rebekah and their sons, Jacob and Esau, we can learn a few things to avoid. 
what goes on in dysfunctional families, some generational effects, family secrets, and how playing favorites with your children can be dangerous. Also our responsibility as fathers and mothers and how much children can learn from us, sometimes at a very high price, very costly. And with that said, I have chosen the title for tonight, The Real Cost of My Love is No Charge. Bow your heads with me, please. Almighty God and my Father, our Father who art in heaven, I am not worthy tonight, God, but your grace is sufficient. And so I ask that you will pour out your grace on me as I speak or discuss tonight to your people. Have your own way, Lord, and bless all those who are listening, God. Bless our families, we pray in Jesus' name. It would be a good thing if you would get on the phone and call a friend, text a friend, or just you know, let somebody know that we are on tonight and we are talking about the family. And the title is The Real Cost of My Love is, is No Charge. You know, mothers are like glue, Sister Dowden. Even when you can't see them, they are still holding the family together. Rebecca and her sons, Jacob and Esau, Genesis 20, chapter 25, 26, 27 is what we're looking at tonight. So let's start with Rebecca. I'll give you a, a little briefing as to where we are going. Rebecca, the wife of Isaac, the man who his father Abraham and Sarah, that Elder Alvaranga spoke about so eloquently on last night, they had a son in their old age, his name was Isaac. You remember Abraham had tied up Isaac on an altar ready to sacrifice him to God when God stayed his hands. After Sarah, the mother, died, Abraham decides it is time for their son Isaac, who is now 37 years old, to get married. He asked his senior servant to go down to Mesopotamia, their original home or his country, and find a wife among his relatives. When the servant arrives in Mesopotamia, he prayed, and a woman approaches a water wheel nearby. He asked for some water, and the kind woman obliged and offered the water. Now, this turned out to be Rebecca, and this was her first appearance in the scriptures. So Isaac remember, Isaac Mary Rebecca, sorry, uh, which her real name, her the meaning of her name, Elder Alvaranga, is captivate. Rebecca means captivate or to pull or to tie, to capture the attention. And oh, how she did in this story. So we move on. She conceived twin boys for Isaac. Their names are Jacob and Esau. But she constantly felt the two inside her womb fighting with each other. Her twins were rivals as fetus. It hurts for Rebecca's so body so much that she hoped for a way out. She said, if it's going to go on like this, why go on living? But she went to consult the Lord. I said, church, she went to consult the Lord. And the Lord answered her. Here is her answer. The Lord said to her, Rebecca, two nations are in your womb. Two people are separating uh, while still within you, but one will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve 
the younger. Rebecca ultimately gave birth to the twins and Esau the first loved to hunt and Jacob the second preferred to stay home and hang around mommy's dress tail. Esau entered the world first and was followed by Jacob who was holding on to his brother's leg. Esau was red haired and hairy and Jacob was not. Now you know the story, but I'm just trying to guide, let you understand where we are going. Stay with me, please. They were fraternal twins and had very different physical characteristics and personalities. Long ago, the rules were that the firstborn son earned the entitlement of the father's birthright a role that carried responsibility as the man of the house. So while they were twins, it meant that it would go to whomever came first. And in this case, church, it was Esau, my church family. And those who are visiting online, hope you're getting the message here. No, we did not learn at any time, even though Isaac and Rebecca knew there were issues affecting the family, there were some dysfunction going on, they still stayed together and they played together, prayed together. As a wife and mother, you should never lose your ability to bond and to laugh and to study and to joke and to do stuff together drive out, take a walk, worship, but don't go shopping together. The point I'm making is men and husband tonight, one of the greatest gift, the greatest legacy you can pass on to your children is to let them see and know that you love their mother. Keep that spark alive. Light don't get dimmer with the setting of the sun and love should get riper as it matures. Now their father Isaac already determined that Esau would have the birthright. He was also Isaac's favorite son, whereas Jacob was Rebecca's favorite son. Each parent favored a child and each child was different, and they both knew their standing in with their parents. That is kind of sad, though. It is kind of sad. You know, parental favoritism, church, family, it hurts. It hurts the family big time. Your children should feel loved and safe in your home. Rebecca loved Jacob and Isaac favored Esau according to Genesis 25, verse 27 and 28. And this caused all kind of problem that did not need to be. Each of our children need to know that they are loved by you. Love cannot be measured. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God is love. All that dysfunctional families know and are pretty good at is drama throughout. Nobody wants to be part of a dysfunctional family. From the time of Abraham, even to the time when these two boys will have their own wife and children, it's always dysfunction, always drama, favorite son, favorite daughter, favorite mother, favorite, even favorite wife. No family is perfect and we know that. We as family, we argue, we fight, we even stop talking to each other at times. But the, in the end, family is family. The love will always be there. We are to share with our children that God had given each of them a special place in the family, which was the exact perfect place for them. Never let them feel that mommy loved me more or daddy loves me more. 
the Lord had revealed to Rebecca, my friends, that Jacob would inherit the birthright. But Rebecca knew how much Isaac loved his older son and wanted to bestow these benefits on Esau. Rebecca felt that Esau was unworthy because he had not always made the proper decision. The blessings would therefore be given to Jacob rather than Esau by Isaac. This way, both sons would be happy and could live in peace. Yep, right. Live in peace. The story tells us their relationship was always in pieces. No peace. In Genesis 27, we continue, when Isaac was old, and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, my son, he said, here I am. Isaac said, I am now an old man and don't know how much longer the breath will remain in my body. So get your little equipments and your stuff and your quiver and your bow and go out to the open country and hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food just like your mama does on Thanksgiving. You kind of know how, how I like it. Then bring it to me so that I will eat and I may give you my blessing before I die. Now Isaac, obeying God's revelation that the older would serve the younger, I'm asking you, was Isaac obeying God's revelation? No, absolutely not. In Genesis 25, verse 23, he wasn't. Isaac tried to secretly give Esau the blessing of his firstborn. That's what Isaac wanted, but God revealed it would go to Jacob that's what God wanted. Isaac is doing this little sneaky thing. Normally a patriarch would call in his entire family as he gave the blessing. In this case, it was a time of celebration to prepare for sadness because man was of age, the man was going down. He soon passed. But Isaac called Esau secretly without his wife, Rebekah, and the other boy, Jacob. Now, Rebekah would follow his example hmm, with a sneakness of her own. Now, as the story goes, Miss Little Nosy Rebekah was listening as Isaac spoke to his son, Esau. When Esau left, after he followed daddy's instruction, he went out into the country to hunt, hunt for game and to bring it back to dad. What Rebecca did, Rebecca now secretly said to her favorite son, Jacob, who is always at home, young man, I overheard. What? Overheard? You are a nosy, Rebecca. You are, well, you are not overheard. You are listening. I overheard your father telling your brother Esau to bring him some game and make him some tasty food to eat so he can give him the blessing in the presence of the Lord before he dies. I love that. In the presence of the Lord. Rebecca remembered that Isaac said the blessing would be given in the presence of the Lord, but she didn't think of the importance or the seriousness of this. She didn't. She's about to tell her little mama boy, Jacob, to trick his father, to willfully sin, disrespectful and casual in the presence of the Lord. Can you imagine that? She isn't concerned about God's presence. There is no hesitancy, somebody say, to steal a wallet in the judge's courtroom. Oh, that God would help us realize, my church family, the awesome truth that 
everything we Christians do is in his presence. And not just in his presence, but with him living inside of us. Rebecca no doubt remembered God's vow spoken before the birth of her twin sons. The older will serve the younger, but still decided to act on God's behalf. Heaven knows the Lord couldn't manage without her. To Rebecca's her way of thinking, she was tricking her husband. She was just, she wasn't tricking her husband. She was just helping him to do God's will. Hmm? Someone say the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Now Jacob protested his mother's plan. But do you think he did so on normal grounds? Tell me. He was afraid of getting caught. What if my father touched me, he said. I would appear to be tricking him, mom, and would bring down a curse and a disgrace on myself. Yes, sir, a curse on myself, hmm? rather than a blessing. Like mother, like son, the outcome, not the means, was what mattered. Rebecca answered, was what, how Rebecca answered was very classic. You watch it said, my son, let the curse fall on me. We think we can stand up to any adversity on our children's behalf and whether any, any fallout for them. But Rebecca was challenging the God of the universe. The Lord demonstrated his love for us. Such demonstrate his love for all such rebellious children when rather than a curse, he offers a blessing to us. Christ redeem us family from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Galatians 3.13. By law, Esau deserved his father's inheritance, but God's redemption and grace uh, Jacob received the blessing instead. It must be difficult for Jacob to sing Shirley Caesar's psalm. I remember mama in a happy way. What a loving God. With such a loving God in charge of our life, why do we feel compelled to run the show sometimes? Uh, did you say because of pride? I didn't hear. Well, mostly uncertainty maybe and at the center of it is fear what if god forget about his promise to me yet his words assure us church that for the lord your god is a merciful god he will not abandon and destroy you or forget the covenant with your forefathers deuteronomy 4 verse 31 in what meaning these four fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God blessed Jacob because God said he would, not because Jacob's mother stepped in. Like Rebecca, our children need us to be in charge during the early years. But the habit is hard to break and often extend well beyond the nursery. Just do what I say. That's what Rebecca told her son. Rebecca told her grown son, just do what I say. You may have come from a dysfunctional family this evening, a dysfunctional home, but that doesn't define you as we are responsible for our own choices. Again, even in the church, we find people want to bully each other the same way. In our homes, we bully do this, do that, listen to me. D did you hear what I say? I am the man in this house. I am the woman. I am the mother here. Not so. Here's what Ellen White says. When parents fail to require prompt and, prompt and perfect obedience in their children, they fail to lay the right foundation of character in them. They prepare their children to dishonor them, 
when they are old and bring sorrow to their heart when they are nearing the grave. Unless the grace of Christ changes the heart and transform the character of their children. Ellen G. White say that in Adventist Home, page 362. What was Rebecca really thinking deceiving Isaac like that? She was thinking about her favorite son and the rich financial and spiritual inheritance that would be his if she intervened. I guess she was not listening to Shirley Caesar when she told her son that the cost of my love is no charge. I wonder what her relationship was like with Esau after she bought the train ticket and gave to Jacob and shipped him off to Mesopotamia to her brother, who himself was a crook. Some of the worst things, my friends, that you can experience sometimes will come from your own family. And this is very sad. Do what I tell you, boy, Rebecca, the biblical mother of Esau and Jacob, uttered these phrases three times in one very dramatic day. Do what I say. You know, for us, while much of the technology and external around humans have changed since Genesis, the internal heart issues of sin and selfishness still have not changed. We are just as sin-stained as Rebecca, Esau, and Jacob, and we need the same glorious Christ, Savior, Jesus Christ, th that they needed. Had she advised her son to eat a healthy meal, to pray to the Lord, we would applaud her good mothering skills. Instead, Rebecca demanded Jacob impersonate his brother to uh, their blind father so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. With dysfunctional families, my friends, it's about control and possessiveness. Oh, the danger of parents having favorites. Not surprisingly, Jacob had two favorite children when he became a father. He had favorite children, sorry, when he became a father, also leading to devastating results. Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, but my brother Esau is a hairy man while I have smooth skin. I would appear to be tricking dad and would bring down a curse on myself rather than blessing. Mom, you two need to listen. Nope. Jacob not concerned that he is tricking his father. Just worry how he appears, feel how he smell and sound to trick his father. Some of us are just like Jacob and Rebecca, not concerned with sinning against God, so long as we don't get caught. We are focused on external appearance, not internal, not on the heart. His mother said to him, my son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Rebecca realized there will be consequences for her sin. But in her mind, the positives of her sin, Jacob getting the blessing, it outweighs the negative of her sin, a curse falling on Rebecca. In other words, it's better to ask for forgiveness after than to ask for permission before. Later on, everyone suffer. We all should know that we can't fall on sin's grenade and absorb the blast by ourselves. Others always are going to get hurt. Only Christ Jesus can fully absorb our sin. So Jacob obeyed mama, did all she said, cooked the food, put on the makeup, put on his costume, went into daddy, introduced himself. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me my blessing, dad. Rebecca, She's still, uh, she's still around the corner listening and making signs to Jacob, which would, we, we, with one eye watching out to see if Esau was going to come catch them. Esau asked his son, listen to this shirt. This is part I want to share with you mostly. Esau asked his son, how did you find it so quickly, my son? He replied, 
The Lord your God gave me success. Seriously, the Lord your God gave me success. My goodness. The worst part of Jacob's sin, the worst part is saying that God blessed him to do it. Invoking the Lord may have comforted Isaac. Surely no one would trick him in the presence, in God's presence. Wow. Don't we do this sometimes? Use God to justify our sin and our selfishness? Well, maybe no. no. We just say it in the name of love. Okay, cool. Before you know it, here comes Esau. And you all know how it ended. You know how it went after Esau showed. When Isaac learned the truth, he trembled violently. When Esau learned the truth, he vowed, I will kill my brother Jacob. And when Rebekah learned of Esau's threat, she again entrusted, in, instructed Jacob, now then, my son, do what I say. To save your life, you're going to the country to live with Uncle Laban. Now, church, as we come close to the end, let us see from Rebecca's example there what we can learn. First, we must understand that there is hope for those who trust in Jesus. And I say amen. Rebecca never saw her beloved son again. That's the problem with barking out orders. Sometimes they come back to bite us. Learn that just because you come from a dysfunctional family doesn't mean that you must carry on the legacy. Families, my dear friends, may be dysfunctional, but there is no such thing as a broken family. I said there is no such thing as a broken family. Family are family. Family is family and is not determined by marriage certificate or divorce paper or adoption documents. Families are made in the heart. The only time family becomes null is when those ties in the heart are broken or cut. Families still remain. It is not broken. Interestingly, in our story this evening, Jacob never apologized to Esau for the deception and Esau never apologized for the threat. How many times do we choose to isolate ourselves rather than take the risk of reconciliation? How many times will we hide in the name of self-preservation rather than offer an apology? What does it take for us, church, to take the risk to move forward rather than stay paralyzed in our old ways that, that were often destructive? Tonight, if you feel you grew up in a family with toxic, toxicity, make it your legacy to break that family legacy. Your motto tonight should be, the pain stops here. Do what you can, do anything to make the family function. And you start by committing yourself and your family to God. Lastly, for friends, Rebecca teaches us by reverse example. One, we should trust God rather than take charge. We should honor our husbands and our wives. And in this case, honor your husband rather than deceive him. We are to instruct our children rather than interference for them. And throw ourselves at God's mercy whenever we stumble, knowing he will guide our steps, even as he gently reminds us to do what I tell you. Can you imagine God favoring his love to another person over you? It's Mother's Day this weekend. 
And I want to say happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. And I pray that we will see Jesus Christ as our example and not that of Rebecca. Now, there were some good things about Rebecca. But church friends, how high the price Jacob had to pay for his actions. Separation from his family deceived himself by his uh, deceived himself by his own uncle Laban, never seeing his mother again. The Bible says Esau sought for repentance with tears and never found it. Crying on and carrying on the unholy tradition, if only Jacob knew and understood, my dear family tonight that the cost of God's love was no charge. May God bless you tonight. And it's my prayer that we all will understand what God wants for us and for our families, that we'll commit our family to him every day, into his love, into his hands, and into his care, because the cost of God's love is no charge. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, here I am again tonight to say good evening to you, <laughs> just like every night. I want to say it is great. It has been great to have you night after night spending your precious time with us. I'm hoping that you had uh, a very good day because if you can be here tonight, it's because of the grace of God. But we want to thank you. We also want to thank Elder McDonald for the special Elder Daniel. Okay, for well, this subject tonight. And uh, I think we have learned a lot this week. So we give you again one day of hope for tomorrow night for a similar podcast. Good night. Good evening also, everyone. We just want to thank you again for being with us night after night. And tonight we have learned really a lot. We thank Elder Donald Webb. I know they both have Donald in their names. Yeah. Donald <laughs> Webb for this great presentation we, you have really touched our hearts and brought us to reflection and i have jotted some notes down uh it says that the greatest legacy that a father can leave to his children is to love their mother i like that one absolutely yes parents with favoritism hurt their children terribly each one of your children must know that they are loved unconditionally. And the question that really um, got to me, and I say that all of us must think about it, is do we sometimes use God's name to justify our selfishness, like Jacob did? Our families may have some dysfunctions, but they are no broken families. Families are families forever. And we just want to pause to say thank you to God for the families to which we have been born. Uh, and at last, the real cost of God's love is his love. And there's no charge to us. Tonight, all we have to do is surrender to him. It's come to him. Thank you so much to our preacher tonight. Tomorrow night, we will be glued to the screen as if we were viewing a real soap opera. The family of Jacob. His dilemma with two sisters. I cannot even imagine that one. Two sisters, two wives. And we're going to see what lies, manipulation, 
unspoken rules what they do to a family. And once again, thank you to our lovely host. I am so glad she decided to stick with us every night <laughs> for two nights, two or three nights. But I am so glad that she is here with us every night. She looks good. Every hair is in place, Sister Jasmine. We, we men, love man. the enthusiasm. Yes, that's what women do. Yeah. We look at each other, how our <laughs> hair looks. Every night you come with enthusiasm. You know, you just make the pastor look good, right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you for our. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for our amazing host. You know, Mark, I told the pastor today in a text that we just want to adapt you. You want to be one of our own. We just want to adopt you. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, thank you so oh. much. <laughs> and I'm so happy that we have two more nights to go. All right. That's all right. I'm just going to say that if you want to join us Saturday, we'll make space for you. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks again to our viewers. And now we have um, a, a, a prayer of patience for our families. And we are going to ask you to adopt a position of reverence while we say that prayer for you. Dear God, in your infinite wisdom, you started the institution of marriage and family. I believe that my family is a gift from you and the first ministry that you have given to me. But God, the enemy has waged war against my family. Peace has been replaced with conflict and manipulation. We used to love and respect each other and now everyone is self-centered, Lord, I repent on behalf of everyone. All of us have wronged you and each other with our selfishness. Forgive us. Give us patience so that we can resolve our differences in an amicable way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. And God bless all our families. Thank you and good night, everyone. Good night. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many of y'all know that we're a part of the family of God this morning? Let me ask that one more time. How many of us are glad that we are a part of the family of God this morning?